Hey everyone, it's Anna. Thanks for joining me in the garden. It's August 4th and I thought I would do an update. I don't think I've done an update since early July, so a lot of things have changed. This is the outside perennial bed in front of the garden and you can see it's just filled with various different types of rudbeckia. There are marigolds, echinacea. There's a great big peony down at the end. There's lots of bachelor buttons and even a few cosmos in here and poppies. <laughs> The um, Rebecca that I'm growing here is all different kinds. There's Triloba, there's Indian Summer, Chim Chimini, Sahara, um, Irish Eyes, and there might even be some Cherokee Sunset in here. Kind of just a mix of all the different seeds I started this year. So it's looking gorgeous, and a lot of these should come back next year. They should reseed. And um, so next year, this area should be filled with yellow flowers, too. And I think they're so pretty and happy. And I love having them in this space. This is the Chim Chimini mix. And this is so fun. I love it. I'm definitely going to have to save some steeds from these um, this year because this is the coolest mix. Um, I haven't harvested any yet for bouquets. Um, I've just really been enjoying them out in the garden, but I do think I'm going to have to cut a few for bouquets and see how they do. So I just think they're so cool. Each flower has its own different unique shape, and um, even the colors range from really bright, happy yellow to yellows with a little bit of brown. There's even a little um, a bit of orange in some of them. So I just think they're so cool. You can see that one has a single ray of petals and the one below had a whole bunch of petals. <laughs> so fun. I love them. So I planted as many varieties as I could get my hands on. Um, started all from seed earlier this year and um, I think they're doing really, really well. I think there's some Gloriosa daisies in here too. That might be one. This is Irish Eyes, has the green center. And then this one, um, I believe is Indian Summer. It's the largest um, of the flowers and has that really beautiful dark brown center. So beautiful. And then here are some of the um, varieties from the Sahara mix that I started from seed. Um, these have lots of different layers of petals um, and the mix comes with all different types of colors. So there's oranges and yellows and browns. There's these beautiful cherry, um, cherry and brown colored uh, flowers. And then, you know, there's lots of varieties. There's cream and cherry. There's so many different varieties. And again, this is the Sahara mix of Rubecchia. And this one is also from the Sahara mix, as is this one. So there's just all kinds of variety um, in that mix. They're a little bit shorter um, than the others, but I still think they're beautiful and worth growing. And this is my first year having success with these. Um, I used to buy pots, potted plants at nurseries and try and um, grow them and they never really did well for me. So starting them from seed was what worked well for me. So taking a look at the cut flower garden, you can see the rows have really filled in with flowers. The first row there is um, a mix of Sweet William, um, Feverfew, um, and some various different greenery mixes. And you can see I've had to stake things up um, with uh, various different stakes and twine as they've grown in. This is the Amazon Neon Cherry, Neon Purple, and oh, whatever the, the assorted one is, um, Neon Rose maybe. And I think they're so fun. This is my first year growing these, and um, I'm going to have to grow more next year. These are so pretty. Uh, and that's the Amazon series, and they are seed to bloom in their first year, where a lot of Sweet William, you have to plant it one year, and then it doesn't bloom until the second year. But this was um, seed to bloom in its first year, so that's exciting. And you can see there's lots of heads there that have yet to open. Lots more flowers yet to come. And they are so bright. You can see this one is the little mix. It has little white and pink and purple flowers in it. And isn't that so cute? It's going to look so nice with some flowers. So I've enjoyed growing these. They are just started blooming. Um, they've only been blooming for about a week. So it did take them a while. And it did take them a while to get going, too. They were... Um, 
they were short forever. <laughs> and then they finally put it um, on, put on some height um, in the last couple weeks and started blooming. Um, here's some feverfew. Um, this little section here um, struggled. It's really short. Um, not sure exactly why. There's other feverfew around it that got really tall. Um, but it's in that weird center of the garden area that I had a lot of die off. And so it maybe have just been too stressed from the cold that we had, the late frosts that we had. But isn't it so cute? I love this little flower. <laughs> They're little cheery faces. And then I also in this row, I have um, a mix of um, nigella. And so this is one of the blue flowers. It's going to come into focus here shortly. Um, there's a blue flower and a white flower, but a lot of them have gone to seed pod already. And they've been really fun in the bouquets too. So I've been picking those and putting them in my bouquets. And uh, they just look, they look really cool. They're a really unique filler. You can see all the little seed pods back there. The snapdragons were gorgeous earlier this summer. Um, there's still quite a few in there to harvest. And um, the ones that were cut back earlier this year have started to send up their second spikes of blooms. So I should have a really beautiful showing of snapdragons um, in about a month. The uh, row of status is doing great. Um, the first blooms you can see are really, really short down inside there. But now the plants are starting to put up really nice long stems. So there's lots of flowers in here to harvest. Those little short ones I'm gonna harvest and use those in a fall craft with my pumpkins. Um, those little shorties down inside there, <laughs> they're all gonna get harvested. And that will make room for lots more of the really long, tall stems. I'm also growing all different colors of straw flower. And um, these have been so fun to grow. I think I'll grow even more next year. These have just been really, really fun. I've harvested a bunch of the flower blooms to use in a craft this fall um, with pumpkins and um, have been putting a bunch of them in bouquets too. So aren't they just the cutest thing? And I love their little crinkly sound. <laughs> They're really cute. And then I'm also growing um, different types of scabiosa. So this is uh, one variety that I'm growing. And then I'm also growing a pink variety, or a, I think it's called salmon, salmon rose maybe. And then I'm also glowing, uh, growing the black night, um, or dark night. You can kind of see it blurry in the background there. But these have been really fun to grow too. They are a little unruly. They're super tall and a little unruly, so they do need to be staked. <laughs> And then um, you can see I have a really beautiful row of zinnias. This is one of the rows that really struggled and got hit with the frost um, when we had those late frosts in May, end of May, early June. And um, But it's coming in. Everything's starting to fill in pretty nice. You can see that the um, cosmos there are out of control. Now, I'm not sure um, right now. I'd have to go check the labels in the garden, but I'm not sure if this is the salmon or salmon rose. And I'm not sure if this is salmon or salmon rose. <laughs> It's one or the other. Each one of them is one or the other. Um, I have both of them planted, and I have them both planted right next to each other. So, you know, there you go. But you can see the difference in color. There's the paler one in the middle there, and then the brighter one at the end. So, <laughs> there's another look at a pale one. Whichever, which, uh, whichever one they are, it's either salmon or salmon rose. Or maybe it's coral. Coral? I can't remember. <laughs> Anyway, these are afternoon white cosmos and these are gorgeous. These are, are so, so pretty. And then here's another row of zinnias. This one has like carmine, lilac, um, wine, and deep red, I believe, are the colors in this row. And here's a look at some of those. This um, is probably a wine. And this one is probably, a, I want to say a carmine. So pretty, huh? Look at all those layers of petals, my goodness. And this one is lilac. And it enticed a little honeybee there. And then this um, last one is the same dark coral um, as in the previous row. I'm not sure if it's coral, salmon rose, whatever. <laughs> and then here's a look at the perennial row. 
on the inside of the garden. You can see it's filling in nicely. There's some plants in here that I don't think are going to bloom until next year. I have a lot of echinacea in here that I think is going to bloom next year. Probably won't bloom this year, but it's looking nice anyways. And then this is some Rudbeckia that I planted last year, and it came back this year, and it's filling in nicely. And then this is another section of Sahara Rudbeckia, and they look gorgeous. But you can see how much shorter they are than the other varieties. And then this is some Colorado Mix Yarrow, and it's just starting to bloom. My dahlias... <laughs> have to be covered. Um, I have 150 organza bags in the field right now and um, I will show you why I'm having to use these bags over the blooms but basically it's because I have an infestation of um, these little black um, in the spring, earlier earlier the summer, I had infestation of these little black blister beetles and now we have grasshoppers like we've never seen before and they are literally eating my blossoms outside edge in um, and so if I want to have pretty blooms that don't have any bug damage I'm having to cover them and I think it looks just ridiculous but it makes the blooms so much better um, you can see here this is one that's in near perfect condition and here's another one that a bee was loving and I love this purple or this uh, coral raspberry color and here's another one that's in near perfect condition. But here is what you can um, expect to see if you don't cover the blossoms. The grasshoppers are literally eating them before I can even get them picked. So this should be a great big fluffy dahlia and you can see its petals are just chewed to nothing. This one they just have started eating and you can see the petals there, some grasshopper poop, but you can see how they've eaten the petals there on the left um, and the right. And this one too, you can see how they've just gnawed all the ends of the petals off. Then they really seem to be drawn to this particular variety, um, which is a shame because it is such a pretty flower and it has um, such a pretty fade from pink to yellow to a little bit of purple or lavender in the center but the le the petals have like a really pretty um, shimmer almost like they're glittery here you can see another light colored one that the grasshoppers have just eaten alive but here is one that's in the organza bag and you can see how it's pristine there are no grasshopper chew marks so that's the reason for the ridiculous looking bags but um you know i've got to do something to keep these grasshoppers off of them because they're just insane. We've never had grasshoppers um, like we have this year. So <clears throat> at least there's an easy solution that doesn't involve pesticides, but um, they look goofy in, in the flower field, that's for sure. This cute little cutie is called strawberries and cream. <laughs> so look at the way that that sunflower is growing out of the garden bed from in between those boards. I didn't think this thing was going to make it even a month into summer and yet here we are. <laughs> and it is so tall. I even tipped it when it was about three feet tall so that it wouldn't get as tall. But look, I mean this thing is like 15 feet tall. It's insane. <laughs> and you can see right about where that great big leaf is just below that is where I actually tipped it um, earlier this spring so that it wouldn't get so tall. But look what it's done. It's shot all of those branches up as if they're individual growth points. So you can see the garden beds are filling in. Um, we've harvested a bunch of stuff. You can see the peas are gone and I've replaced um, where the peas were with some some flowers. I've also pulled up lettuce that had bolted and was bitter and I fed it to the bunny, what was left of it, and then planted some flowers in that space. Um, but you can see there's all kinds of stuff growing. Um, there's some carrots that are probably ready to pick. I think I need to go through and find some that are ready because they're starting to flower. <laughs> um, there's a little row of sunflowers in there where the lettuce used to be. There's a, sh a short row of um, snapdragons and there's a short row of green beans in there. And then on the hoop trellises this year, I'm growing cucumbers, but I fail miserably at growing cucumbers every year. This year I've actually eaten a cucumber. It's, it was about three inches long. <laughs> Uh, I just cannot grow cucumbers to save my soul. 
Um, but you can also see in that bed that I've um, cut back the um, bachelor button flowers that were blooming so pretty um, in the last video. Uh, here is a look at the uh, one of the beds that has the, the large tomatoes. There's the blue beauties in there. There's some black crim and some Cher um, Cherokee purple. So they're starting to set fruit and get big. So that's exciting. And you can see some of the volunteer sunflowers in the garden have started blooming. They just started blooming this week and um, they are super tall as well. There's all kinds of stuff that's been doing pretty well. I've been pulling some things out of the garden that were getting really ratty. We had some really hot weather and it kind of things made things suffer. There was some nasturtiums that looked really bad so I ended up pulling those giving more room to what was left in the bed. Here's some of those beautiful um, blue beauty tomatoes. Aren't they so cool? And then back inside there you can see some black crim. That's what those green ones are. So that's exciting. That's my favorite tomato. I was happy to find those. And then here are um, some more blue beauties and Cherokee purple. Uh, these are some specialty zinnias. These are the Florette zinnias. This is the unicorn mix, and I love this mix. I'm trying to figure out um, which which uh, flowers I want to save seed from. So I think they're so cute. I love the little pops of pink and orange in there. So fun. Um, this is a look at some of the cherry tomatoes, and do you see what I see? Oh my gosh, those are the first two ripe cherry tomatoes in the garden. I'm so excited. I totally forgot to grab them before I left the garden too, so I'll have to get them tomorrow. But these are just a different, um, six, I think, different varieties of cherry tomatoes all planted on this row. This one is Prairie Fire, if I remember correctly, and it's going to be um, red and orange and supposed to be super sweet. My decorative corn is growing up good. I don't know that I'm going to get any corn, but um, there's, oh, there's a volunteer sunflower in there too. <laughs> um, but I'm happy to have the stalks, even if there's no corn, I really just wanted the stalks for um, Halloween, Halloween decorations, fall decorations. And my chicken whirly gig, keeping her eye on things. Uh, this is a f uh, garden disaster. <laughs> we had some rain this morning, and um, when I came out to the garden this morning, I noticed that this particular aisle was now um, housing some tomato plants that had fallen over. So I need to get back out in the garden tomorrow and stake those up. Here is where I pulled out a row of green beans. That was all done. And in its place where that open space is, I've planted my last succession of sunflowers. And then in this bed, there's a couple rows of dahlias that were the last to be planted. So one of them has started blooming, but the rest of them haven't started yet. And then there's some more specialty zinnias there um, on the front edge of the, that bed. I think there's some um, queen lime orange, queen lime red, and some queen lime blush, I believe. And this is one of the queen lime orange. So pretty. So pretty. Here's a look at those late planted dahlias. I think they'll be fine. Um, the dahlia farm that I bought them from here locally hadn't planted all of their dahlias um, when, I when I purchased these tubers. And... Uh, so I think they'll be fine. They'll probably just start blooming closer to frost. The blueberries are um, delicious this year. Here's a look at some of our later varieties. And then we have these black hollyhocks that volunteered around the garden. Um, these are were planted from some seeds I got from a cousin of my dad's. So my second cousin, I believe. Here are some more rudbeckia. And here's a look at from the other end of the... Um, cut flower rows. You can see just how many flowers are in there. Lots of flowers to be had for picking. Here is um, a late succession of sunflowers. There's three different varieties there, all in fall colors like um, terracotta, red, and a bicolor. And here you can see the zinnias and cosmos looking gorgeous. Those afternoon white cosmos are so pretty. There's a great big volunteer sunflower there as well. And here at the bottom of the screen, you can see here are my zucchini plants and we have picked so much zucchini already. Um, <laughs> I have a literal counter full of zucchini in the house right now. <laughs> and I think we have six zucchini plants um, 
it's been crazy. But they loved the heat that we had um, last week. And then here's a look at my um, succession of sunflowers that are the branching variety. They're all planted in one section there. You can see how just how big my zucchini plants are. Out of control. And then over here on the right hand side, you can see all the different pumpkins. They haven't grown as big as I thought they would have, but it's also my first year growing them and the soil might not be amended um, well enough for them. So um, whatever we get this year, I'll be happy with, but we'll, we will uh, strive to have more um, pumpkins and bigger pumpkins next year. Here's one of them has set and growing. And then here is another one. So these are going to be fun. I think this one's a howden, and the other one may have been a jack-o'-lantern. So, And then some of the gourds have also set fruit. Isn't this one fun? Uh, I'm growing the gremlin gourd mix, so there should be all different kinds of um, gourd varieties on each of the plants. And then this cute little white pumpkin is called Casper, and it has set on several, this plant has set on several white pumpkins. And then there are the sunflowers at the far end of the garden. And they've been um, so beautiful this year. I've harvested about half of the row already. And then you can see the branching varieties there. My scarecrow. And then back, you can look back to see the pumpkins again. And I do have a couple scarecrows uh, in the garden. I don't know if they're doing any, any good. Um, but I make them out of kids' clothes. So... Thanks so much for joining me in the garden. I hope you enjoyed this update. Um, I enjoyed filming it for you and uh, keeping record for next year's reference. Always good to look back and see how things grew. So thanks so much for joining me. Talk to you soon. Bye!